Howdy folks, Polly here. In this video, I'm going to do a trap beat build out from a blank template in Logic uh, from start to finish. And we're going to feature play series from Contact Native Instruments, uh, Ignition Keys, a very cool library that was released back in September. It's about $49 US, a ton of great patches. Uh, the description on Native Instruments says that it's targeted for pop, but we all know trap music draws lots of influences from lots of different genres. So I'm just gonna see what I can find here and, and, and crank out some stuff with it. Uh, again, a, a beat from scratch. Uh, let's poke around just a bit to show you some of the noises here. I'm in the keyboard section now. You've got basses, keys, leads, mallets, the usual Potpourri. Let's let's start with the, the keys right at the top here. It's a nice lo-fi keyboard sound in there. Kind of mellow. A little bit distorted. All that distortion there is built into the patch, not from my master bus. I've got no effects on the master bus, nothing else. Everything you're hearing here is the uh, is within the plugin itself. And then how the plugin works, you look at around real quick, it gets into a quick orientation in case you want to go out and buy it. I think you should. I get nothing for it. I'm not sponsored. They didn't give this to me. Bought it with my own money. Uh, so at the bottom left, your controls, your balance of A and B. The, the whole concept is you have patch A, patch B, you're blending the two together, adding effects, etc., and you're dotting it up the way you want. So the balance, that's just lead A. There's your organ on the right. Cutoff is basically built in EQ. stuff, how much reverb do you want in the bass. Right. And this one's flanger. Now apparently each of these dials is assignable to all the effects and the effects are built into each patch. So if I click on the effects up here top right, you can see we've got all these different things, tape saturation, flanger, reverb, replica. So you can go in here and adjust each one the way you want it to. Uh, so you can get very, very fine control of this very, very cool tool. So get back to some patches here. Um, We've got some more keys here. Let's just find what we got here. What's this? Interesting stuff. stuff right there. Let's take a look at some other things besides the keys. Let's look at some uh, pads. Lots of movement, lots of color in these pads and keys which would be really nice if you want to reverse stuff in trap music when you're doing your samples. Let's look at some other patches real quick here. Look at some plucks. Alrighty, so let's get started. Let's, like, there's a whole bunch of patches you can go through. You can spend hours and hours going through. Um, but let's just get started and build in the trap beat. So get back to the keys. Let's think, let's just start somewhere in the middle here. Maybe 
that's too busy, too much going on initially. That's really what I've got here. Now we'll stick with it. We'll stick with that. So, no worry. Keys. All right. Let's put. What do you got here? Tempo eighty-five. Click back. Okay. Let's start something here. Let's figure something out. We'll just drop something in, uh, let's do A minor, I guess. No, G minor. phrase G minor to E flat to D7 okay so now what I'm going to do I'm going to, to highlight that little region right there that little spot just those eight bars I'm going to bounce it in place because I want to reverse it so Control B to bounce in place. And if you don't have that eight bar section highlighted and you just bounce it in place, Logic will bounce the entire track all the way to measure 49, which takes a little extra time and gives you some extra you know, space at the end of your file. So here is the track now bounced. So it's the same thing. It's not MIDI, it's pure audio. Turn this off for a second. I don't want to reverse the whole thing. I'm going to reverse this in sections, in one bar sections, because I do change the chords a little bit. So what I can do here, <clears throat> let's put the line on the one full measure spot here. So if that's the dominant measure two, I'm going to mouse over my, my line. I'm going to hold option and command. My scissors pop up. Command gets me my secondary tool. The option lets me do something special here. So now when I click on this, it's going to split this eight bar phrase, a single file into eight equal one measure files. Bam, there we go. So now it, I can reverse them and the, the harmonies will stay in the same beat where they're supposed to be. So on the far left here, if you're not seeing this in your own version, open the region, click on reverse. Bam. Now let's see what it sounds like. Uh, it's got that beginning, that kind of sharp attack. I think we're okay. Let's put the two together just to see what it sounds like. Now, I'm not going to use these both at the same time, all the time. I'm going to create a, a full beat with all sorts of sounds in it. And then I go through the track and slice it up, adding and moving stuff. I'm not to give a full worked out beat, but a lot of reverse sounds in trap music lately, so throw some in there by itself again. I might add some audio fades just to give it a little more reverse sound. How did I do that? Undo. If you move your cursor to the top left of an audio track and the shape changes, click and drag and that's give me a fade. That's a manual fade. You can also enter a numeric value if you want. Undo. Go over to uh, under more fade in, let's do 25 milliseconds. That's not much. Let's do a hundred. Did I do that right? Let's try 50 just for grin and see what happens here. That didn't seem like it maxed out. Let's just undo that completely. Maybe there's a max level there. I'm not sure. Uh, well, I'm going to stick with manual version then. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to duplicate that track because I'm going to bounce it back to a, another single unit. But I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to. Actually, I'm not. Not. Bounce. I'm going to bounce it right now. Let's do it this way. Bounce. Boom. So now I've got a single file. Uh, 
for the whole thing together and I can, that way I can go back and change uh, and modify my original if I want to. I'm going to hide that for now. All right, <clears throat> so we got part one. Let's go find some kind of pluck or some other thing. So duplicate my contact instrument and find a different patch. Let's just go something random here, keys. Kind of similar. I want to find something that's sonically different. back here for a second through my master's on. See, that sounds real similar, so I gotta find something different. Definitely different. That's different. We'll go with that. So we're going to call that a key two thimble. So we got. for me. Let's add another, let's duplicate this again and add another, another melodic track to it. Let's go to the uh, plucks. Cakes, we'll go with you. And I just like to type the name of the track just so I can see what I'm working on. Uh, if I come back to a project later or this you know, project changed down the road and I don't know what patches I use or the library stops working or I uh, go you know, open it with a new library, I uh, just want to have the information in front of me when I can. So. For a second.
Okay, well that'll work for now. Getting a dark trap vibe here. So now um, let's bring in the 808. So for that, uh, and there's lots of samples out there uh, you can go with, but I'm a huge fan of 808 Warfare. Uh, so let's pull that up here. It's a contact instrument and we'll go get it right here. 808 Warfare has a whole bunch of basses in it, uh, slide basses as well, mangled basses. Uh, very, very cool instrument. You can do a lot of things to it. So let's just pull up, uh, we'll go with a compressed 808. What's the difference? I'll show you in a sec. Cool. So first is a smooth, clean 808. Dirty downtown. There's a whole bunch of 808s in here. So let's go back to my compressed. That's got a long release to it. I'm going to adjust that. A little shorter there. And so we're at G minor, E flat, and D sus. Is that the 16th notes? Because of that one little 16th note. Okay, so that works. Um, I'm going to take this little four bar thing and Command R to replicate it. I'll highlight the two, J to join. So now I've got my uh, basic melodic stuff here. Uh, I've got an 808. So bada bing bada boom, I'm going to pick up the pace here and now that I noodle around a bit and uh, start getting to work. So 808 is there. Let's go get a kick. And this is when I start plugging I'm a music mogul, uh, as in supporting him. I don't know him. Uh, I've watched a ton of his videos on YouTube. I'm a music mogul, fantastic beat creator. I think he's probably the most underrated beat creator right now on YouTube. Has lots of subs, lots of fantastic sounds. He's gotten into software. I'm gonna pull up one of his plugins in a bit on the 808, we'll show you. Um, maybe I'll bust out Wavy as well, another plugin. He's got several plugins out and he created a fantastic trap focused sample pack uh, in 2022. And every month he sent out updates to that track. So I'll kind of, let me poke into that now and show you what it looks like, uh, but definitely cool. So I've got my whole folder here uh, for mobile's stuff broken down by the different instruments, just how it comes. And then I mentioned the expansions he did. Um, every month he sent stuff out. So the expansion, the addition stuff, all these kicks, 808s, let's do by name here. Whole bunch of 808s. And then you can scroll down to other stuff here. Lots of effects, all sorts of hats. Kicks, hi hats. You see, there's hundreds of sounds in here as the additional stuff, in addition to the uh, the actual kits that you got from starters. So uh, I've got an 808 already, so I don't need to use his. Let's uh, bring in a kick drum. Since I've got a distorted or compressed 808, I'm going to go with a clean kick. That super clean sounds good. So. Uh, for a long time, I used to just drag samples into the individual track, copy and paste them, edit them. Uh, and then I realized, you know, Logic has some fantastic built-in sampling capabilities. So I'm going to drag my sample from the far left to the far right over this area here. And a pop-up menu happens. And I'm going to go into the quick sampler here at the top. What that does is it drops your sample into a sample. And it's, now we've got a full, full chromatic uh, bass drum in this example. So when you drop your sample into the sampler, it drops it right on middle C of your keyboard. You can edit that if you want to. I can shorten this, make it really clippy. And put a fade on if I want. But I don't want to do that. There we go. So now, um, I like to put the kick off of the 808 uh, so they don't collide with each other. There, you can also uh, use side chaining or mobiles uh, tool called duck out when the kick drum and the 808 hit at the same time 
they, they can conflict and those low frequencies just turn into mud. If you want some you know, cleanness, you want to make sure that the, the uh, 808 ducks out of the way of the kick. Um, so hence the plug-in duck out. Um, but I'm, I'm, in this particular track, I'm just going to have the kick drum not hit the same time that the 808 does. So let's uh, make this a little wider here just for grins. And let's do a little something here. Sloppy, but that's what quantizing is for. So select all, Q to quantize, replay. right off of that kick. Okay, that works for me now. So replicate that section. J for join, bada bing, bada boom. Um, now we need some snaps and claps and snares. And again, I'm building a completely full beat for eight bars, all the ingredients. Of the salad and then i'm going to spread them out and add stuff pull stuff out etc so it's going to be noisy at first but we'll we'll get some clarity in a bit so let's go back let's look for some snares Yeah, I like that one's got a stereo sound to it, so let's pull that in, drag it over here, quick sampler. Not gonna do anything fancy, just that. And then let's go get a clap or a snap. I think snaps are in the uh, percussion section. There we go. Okay, I'll record this one in. We'll stick with the original. So we need a crispy clap in here because that's really, really popular. So let's go back to my claps. Ooh. That galactic's pretty crispy. We'll go with that. I did too many upbeats. If I can just clean those out. So we've got my melodic instruments and I'm going to do some color coding now is what I usually do. Uh, all my harmonic, melodic, you know, key centric related stuff. I make one color, 
control option C for the color palette. Let's pull some colors in here, purple. My 808, my base is always blue. And why do I do this? Because once a track is ready to be sent to a client, a library, uh, they often ask for alternative mixes or alt mixes. And that's not just everything, but there's maybe bass and drums only or, or pulling out the lead lines. And so by color coding things, I can work faster and see you know where stuff is at. And all those seconds here, seconds there, save you a lot of time. Because these days in the, in, the, in the music library world, you're generally sending you know batches of 10 or more tracks to clients. Um, they don't have the time to filter through a track or a couple of tracks. I've been doing that for a couple of years now. Uh, they really prefer that. That way the paperwork's all done in one fell swoop, one batch versus onesie twosie stuff here. And a thing I've always said, uh, you know, sync music industry is a service industry. Uh, we are providing music to a client. We are artisans, not artists. Uh, and if you go to 52 Qs and join that community, you learn about the concept of artist versus artisan. Artists working on creating their craft, their art, being discovered as artists. Artisans are servants. We are providing a service for our clients. Therefore, the music should meet their needs, not our needs. Now, if you combine them both, that's fantastic. But we're focusing on delivering a product to your customer. You want to make it easy for them to work with you by providing a batch of 10 versus a batch of two. Um, makes it easier for them. So just a little advice right there. Let's go and do the hi-hat. So we've got the 808, we've got the kick, all the percussion, we've got our, our core elements to start, but we need the hi-hat to really bring this truly into the trap idiom. So what we're going to do is go over to on my mobile collect collection here. I've got some hi-hats in front of me right now. Yeah, that fire one sounds pretty bright, like a cut through. That's kind of humble, a good name for it. We'll go with fire. Drag it over here, quick sample. But now instead of you know doing this via MIDI, playing it in myself via hand, you know, I suppose I could. But um, to get those really tight buzz rolls, those those flutters, those stutters, whatever you want to call them, um, you got to do 16ths and 30 seconds or higher. So uh, let's do something different here. Instead of doing it via MIDI, um, you could always get some MIDI patterns if you want. Mobile's got some great uh, hi hat patterns out there for sale as well. Um, and again. I don't get paid endorsed. I just think his product is great. So I want to promote the individual guys out there. Uh, so clicking on the, in the gray space next to my new track, right click, create a pattern region. So now I've got a step sequencer and I've got 16 steps, four beats, each beat sliced up by four. I want to go to 32. And now I can, I can individually enter each note or I can just click and drag, click, hold, drag. So now I've got... Oh, I missed one. Bam. But that's kind of boring. Well, first, let's change the dynamics a little bit. So we're going to go back to velocity and value. And right now it says 100. That's a little bit of a fooler. It's not 100%. MIDI is from 0 to 127, the values. So 128 values total, 0 to 127. So that's not as loud as it can get. I can click on each of these and go up and down and change the volume. I can click and drag, get, get a little human velocity in there, just kind of a little bit of randomness. All that stuff adds up. And I'll probably go back and tweak some of that stuff in a bit here. I don't want all that stuff super hot. So we got now. Let's solo it. This is a slight little pulse now because I changed the velocities. But now to make it really trappy, let's go in and add some stutters and some rolls. So again, same menu, go to the note repeat, and boom, the numbers change. There's a one because there's one note within each space. But now I can change that by clicking on it and dragging up and down up to as many as 16 pieces. But that's a whole lot. It's just it's not musical. Unless you want that, but I'm going to go down a little bit. Let's go a bit. And you just go through and add where you want some stuff. And a lot of times I'm singing these in my head. So I'll do some couple short ones here. So let's do. That's too many.
Boom, okay, that works. Now we've got our stutters built in, we've got our dynamics built in, um, all the notes are there, but I wanna add some pitch to it, and I'm gonna make some more changes afterwards, so how do I do that? Well, I can change these notes you know, using the pitch here, but that's just way too much work. What I'm gonna do instead, I'm gonna duplicate this track, Command D, and then uh, we're gonna do Option Drag to put it down below. We'll turn this guy off for now because we don't need it anymore. Why not? Because I'm going to take what we just copied and right click and convert it to a MIDI region. Boom. Now I've got my MIDI. There's all the notes I created in the familiar warm blanket look of the piano roll. So now I can go in and uh, do some more creative stuff here. We'll zoom in a bit. What am I going to do? I'm going to mess with the pitch here. What does that give me? And then we'll get a nice little drop here. Maybe we'll that velocity a little bit. Get to where I can't really hear them. Finish the phrase with all the lower. Wait, the velocity is lower here, so it fades out. Give you some life to a normally dry hi hat. Okay, we're good. Stick with that. Now 
take some time to get your hi-hats the way you want them, but they're such an important part of trap, you want to make it just the way you want it. Ready. Um, so now we got that there, put it with a mix. So uh, that's good. We've got hi-hats there, but there are still some more we can do, some more ear candy we can create. Uh, first, I want to do some panning. I um, don't want them straight down the middle. I want to go left and right a little bit. So let's bust out Pancake from Cable Guys, a fantastic plugin. That's pretty drastic. It's going hard left and hard right. I'm going to make it a little more subtle. And I'm going to put that over a, uh, a beat and a half versus a beat. I'm sorry, a measure and a half versus a measure. That way it's not always repetitive. And there we go. And now we're going to add some more color to it. We're going to get a flanger. That's pretty strong. Yeah, that's better. Oh, there's different kinds of flangers. Again, this is stock flanger from Logic. It's kind of crazy. That's something Kanye probably do. It's so crazy. What was the first one I did? Let's go back to default. Recall default. So you know, we're giving some ear candy for the listener here. Put it back in. Cool, that works. So let's hide the original since we don't need it anymore. Okay, so we got our melody, harmony type stuff. We got our 808, our percussion. We're gonna add more in a bit. Um, we got our hi-hats. Let's go treat the 808. I mentioned something earlier in the video, so let's get back to that. Um, the, right now the 808. It's a distorted or compressed, you know, sound straight down the middle. So let's bust out Mobile's plugin called Wide. It's a stereo plugin, which means your track needs to be stereo. And so what it does is it spreads out the uh, 808. So let's just play it and you can hear it in your head. Now, unlike a lot of stereo spreaders out there, uh, Mobile's got the design so that you're not having any phase issues. Phase when the two waves are, are overlapping each other in a way that it makes the overall combined sound lesser than the original. And then you can control how much, of, how do you, you want, how severe of a spread do you want it? That's as far as it goes. You can actually add some highs, it turns out to distortion. I've got enough in the original compressed patch. So now let's, that's a pretty widespread. Let's bring it back, dial it down a bit. Fully mono, fully spread. And the severity of the spread is here. How much spread is here? I like that. Let's put it with the rest of the track. With, do it without. Nice and clean, but with that wide, it really makes it wide. That's the name. So we'll go with that. So shout out to Mobile for that really cool plugin. Um, let's make this replicated so it matches everything else. Uh, cool. So we've got the basics. Let me pull my melodic stuff out for a second. Let's just listen to the beat. And that 80 is kind of hot. So let that Got a hidden track that's still playing. Where are you? You're high. There you are. Turn you off. Alrighty. Okay, so um, don't need to hide that anymore since I'm, I know what I'm using. Um, 
Now, one thing I'm lacking in here, I like to use a lot of snare fills, tuned snares, sprinkled throughout the entire thing, kind of like some salt and pepper in your food. So let's take another hi-hat. Now, my hi-hat here, my fire hi-hat's pretty busy and affected. I'm sorry, not hi-hat, snare. My bad. My bad. Back to my snare. Got that flex snare, but I want to bring another different sounding snare for my snare fills. So let's go get my snares. This is the one I like to use called tight. There it is. Bring that in. Quick sampler. Yay. And then we'll put it up here. Put it right next to the snare. And here's what I mean when I talk about adding snare fills, just a little little sprinkling stuff here. And usually so in the upper part of the register, the higher snare. Just a little something, little something there. Let's do a little quantization here. That works. Copy that over here as well. We'll keep it there. And now what I'll do when the track is full, I'll go ahead and do that throughout the entire track, changing it on each phrase just to add some variety. Um, what else are we missing, folks? I'm not thinking clearly right now. Why am I not? thinking clearly. So what we're gonna do now is replicate all this. I don't need my step sequencer anymore. Get rid of that. Get rid of that one as well, because I'm done with that there. And now we let's join these guys together. Uh, that's right, gotta make all my percussion the same color. Left it all. I'll join those guys here. Uh, Command R replicates. Oops, didn't have everything selected. What happened there? Do this here. I'm gonna join these guys together. Join, create a new audio file. Yes. Now my colors are off. All right. Now we can replicate everybody all together now. Command R. How long of a track do we have now? Shoot for about two minutes or so in the trap in the uh, TV world. That's two twelve. That'll work. Two fifteen. If I stop here, it's one fifty two. Now we're good. We'll keep it at two fifteen. Gives me a chance to have some breakdown stuff here. So obviously we're not going to do this whole thing that way. Okay, we're going to uh, make things different. So normally I would, you know, cut away, edit it, and come back. But on this video, I'm just going to sit here and let you walk through the process to see what I'm thinking. So, um, and again, the focus is TV sync music, not writing a rap or a hit song. I'm setting a mood, and it's seen on TV somewhere. And uh, so I want to have some variety, keeping the same mood. Uh, so let's, I will start with an intro. Um, a popular thing these days I'm hearing from fellow writers is start right on the beginning of the cue. With everything, you know, guns are blazing. So that the editor, when he's scrolling through the music, hears what the whole thing is right away. Sometimes playing an intro there might cause them to, you know, to skip it. Um, I haven't had any problems with my intros, um, so I'm going to stick with the intro, and maybe we'll do a nice short intro. So I'm going to add one more section here. Let's do this here. One more section. Replicate. I'm going to do a four-bar intro. So let's just do this. I'm going to cut it. That was Command-T. Delete all that. 
select all and drag it over. So now I've got a four bar section here that's gonna be my intro. Now my track is 226. So I could go here. Let's see here, I'm trying to think that we got intro, section, section, section. Thinking out loud. Do a quiet section. We'll do a breakdown here. So this will be, this will be a breakdown section here, and then it'll get a little bigger. So, got it. So, let's take out my 808. That's gonna indicate to me the space is for the breakdown section. Generally, you wanna have an intro, section one, and then variety, and then a slight breakdown, and then the big finish, or just a bigger finish than the breakdown. So, let's get back to our intro. Uh, no drums on the, uh, on the intro, it's only four bars. Maybe you'll do some snaps or claps halfway through it. Get rid of that, don't need a snare yet. But we, we might keep the snare in there. Let's go with that, take the bass out. Let's see what we got so far. Way too much going on, so I'll delete that. Okay, so that's fine, but I think I need to add some EQ and kind of fade some of this stuff in here. And that's one thing I haven't done yet. I can, now would be a good time, I guess, uh, to go and talk about EQ. So I want to do an EQ, low pass or high pass fade. So let's go where everything's playing. I'm going to hit my EQ on each track. Um, you want to make sure you get all the mud out, not a bunch of low end stuff. Because if you have 10, 15 tracks, and they've all got some stuff below 100 uh, hertz. It all combines and, and, and cancels each other out, and you got your track has no bottom. And we need bottom. This is a trap. You got a big bottom on these things. So let's start with track one. Hit the EQ. Not a whole lot of mud here, but there is some around 80, so I'm going to do this here. Alrighty, now let's do it. Now, since this is a reverse of the previous one, I can just option drag uh, to the EQ. Is it the same exact instrument? Save some time. Work smarter, not harder. Let's look at our next one here. Same thing. Uh, so drag it over as well. And then my thimble key. That's kind of high. Is there any mud in the bottom? Oh, look at that. There is some stuff popping up. See those little waves down there? No, we don't want those. Cross them out. See, why is that there? That's just left over from the recording process. Eight oh eight. It's going to be bass. That's all it is. Is bass. But uh, we want to take a little bit off the edge. No, we're good. All that low frequency. Let's just see, do we even hear it? Let's do this. It's there, but you don't need it. It's just gonna cancel out bass frequencies from more important instruments, so let's take it out of there. How much do I want? Don't wanna hurt the characteristics of the snare, so we're good there. So that snare's pretty clean. We're good there. Just the snap. Clap. Just creeping up there. Actually, fine. There's not gonna be anything going on there, but let's just look just in case. Nope, we're good. So when we're good, I'm gonna take that EQ out of there because I've got an older Mac, an eight-year-old Mac, and every bit of CPU I can save, the better. Okay, so I, I went and did the EQing for everything um, because I was thinking I wanted to do a 
fade in at the beginning of this track. So now let's start from the beginning here. So let's do this here. Hit A, and now we're gonna change this to my EQ. High pass, high cut frequency. Click on this to get the initial bar there, and I wanna do a fade in. So click my point here where I want it to stop. Click and drag. What does that give me? It gives me this. Put it all together. I'm gonna do the same thing for the pluck, baby cakes. Okay, baby cakes, let's get you some EQ filtering here. Click on it to show it up. Boom. Hinge point. Maybe you want to add some of that reverse in the uh, in the uh, beginning here. So let's, let's take a piece of this. We're going to cut this in half, slice a cake, and take one of these here, and we're just going to drag it over there. Back to the beginning. Let's try the same thing here. Might not need it, but we'll give it a try. Okay, that's good. Now I wanna have a little bit of space uh, into measure five here, and that pad was kind of ringing long. Let's get out of my head curve here and go to this. snare get that little snare out of there actually I don't want to keep that in I'm gonna name these fills That one's ringing kind of long, so I'm going to shorten this a little more. You know what, and the echo in there, some other things in there. Yeah, the echoes kill me there, so I'm going to use a high pass um, filter to cut out just that section there. So get out of the editor, go to here. Let's zoom in on that sucker a little bit. So I'm aiding my automation. Okay, well, I want to ring a little longer, so I'll do that. Okay, just that little tiny snare fill is what they want to hear. Okay, so get out of my automation, go back to the full screen, back to the intro.
change that snap to the beginning part. Well, snap on the downbeat to show that we're pausing for a second here. It is still a little abrupt for me, so. That works better for me, okay. Make sure that it doesn't come back in too early. It is a little hair early. I'm gonna go right there. Okay. So I got my intro done. So now I get out of automation and now let's do some, uh, uh, some bada bing bada boom here, bada bing bada boom, that's that. That's just the same bit, what about twice? I must have duplicated it for twice for some reason. I'm not gonna do this one anymore. Say bye bye. Okay, clean up your track. Oh, I better stay if I haven't done that in a while. Always save your work, folks. You never know when something's going to crash on you. So now let's do some, some arranging. So we got my eight bar intro, my four bar intro. So let me pull some of these things out of here. We're gonna keep it full. So the clap will stay, the snap will go. All the hats are in. That's all there. That's all gonna stay. I think I'll keep my snares out for now. And so that big section here, you know, is the main theme right here. And then now once that's like, hi, we're coming. And then boom, here we are. And now the variation begins starting bar 13 or so. So, um, Let's break it down a bit. So let's take that bell out. Uh, take the take the uh, pluck out for now. Let's see what that sounds like. Oh, that's right. Take off the hi hats for a bit. We'll bring them back in halfway through. Take the volume down on those a bit also. Got the snap and the clap. We're gonna take the snare out. Bring this down a bit. Let's just go like that.
Okay, so we got that. I'm going to do some automation as well. Okay, so while I was playing, I was just kind of going through and visually in my head, where do I want some things to fade in and fade out? So let's just play, let's isolate these and show you what we got here. So this track here is gonna fade. So my main key melody or theme here, I brought down. I may do that again earlier. Let's see what we got going on here. So I'm just adding high frequencies, dropping high frequencies, just to give it some stuff to make it not sound the same the whole way through. I might try to do some more here with the keys, because the main thing I'm hearing in this track is this key pattern. That's better.
impacts now, some downbeats um, to really give me some thump on some of the bigger phrases. So let me shout out another one of my favorite vendors, Cymatics. So let's go back to my samples and go to my Cymatics folder. I got a lot of Cymatics bought over the years. Oh, let's just search for impact. I've done this before. I go to them a lot for impacts. <laughs> Ultimate impacts, we got terror impacts down here somewhere. There's my terror impacts. Standard impacts. Let's go with that one, number 23. Okay. So we're coming in after a quiet section here. Well, of course, Cymetics is known for their very crispy, high volume, high impact samples. That's a little hot, so I'm going to take the volume down a bit. A couple different ways to do that. You can do the slider, but first let's take the source down. So click on the track, go to the gain over here. Let's take it down about 5 dB. See how that sounds. And now I can go with the slider some. Good. Now, so at the beginning, our wake up call. Oops, wrong key. Undo that. Got a little sloppy there. And then we'll put it at the end. We haven't had it. We had to have a boomer stinger ending. So boom. Um, so coming off the intro now. It's a little loud. And that snare fill at the beginning. It needs to be busier. Let's get. Need some more stuff in there instead of this just light. Louder. One, two, three, three. I'll do the stutter here. Let's do a stutter here. So change our resolution to 64ths. Build up on that. Get the volume down a hair. Let's get that one out of here. Let's just stick to but that but but ninety sixth for a second here. That's a little more impact there. I like that, so we'll keep that. 
and maybe we'll use that same come on out of the Now we're going to drag that sucker over here. Use the same fill coming into our last big kick. Let's do some editing here. Pick these suckers, get some space. We'll go with Saucy. If you're still here, I appreciate you hanging out. This is a time consuming process, but I'm hoping that it's, it's informative. I really enjoy watching workflow uh, of other composers. I learn something all the time, keystrokes, you know, sound ideas, things of that sort. Um, so let's add some little open hi hats here and there. Get a little tired. Been recording video for a long time, so I'm impressed it's last this this long. Let's go back to 16th real quick. Q boom. That works for me. Bring those back here, bring it back here, save my work. All right, got open hi-hats in there. I think we're pretty good. Got the EQ done, got my percussion, my 808, my melodic stuff. Added my open hi-hats there, get the colors right. Let me fire up VSX, some very, very cool headphone software combination. <coughs> you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to use Ozone. I'm going to try this. Ozone's pretty CPU intensive. Um, so I'm recording video and logic, and Ozone's going to do some analytics. So let's see what happens if I just blow up my computer. So saving my work, let's highlight the busy section. Ozone, I've got an older version, Ozone 8, paid for a couple years ago. Still very, very solid. It's a fantastic tool. Uh, from Isotope, and um, it does a bunch of analysis, analysis, analytics, analysis of your stuff. And I want this to be a certain volume, so I want negative 10 lefts. I'm a maximizer there, so I do a master assistant. This thing goes and listens and offers some recommendations based on your target. Uh, I'm just going to go streaming medium intensity, I'll go low intensity, and I hit next. And it's going to say, okay, wait for music, so next. It's 
ozone. It says, you want to accept this? I'm like, sure, let's do that. Now let's do a comparison. This is with ozone enabled. And off. Pretty close, pretty similar. So, you know, it's pretty close. So it tells me that my mix was relatively good to begin with, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and accept it because there's probably things that I can't hear. Maybe you can, other folks can. So I'm gonna keep that in there. So now I've got that uh, ozone applied to it, saving my work since I didn't crash. Uh, now I'm gonna go to, go to VSX, Stephen Slate's VSX plugin. Headphones plus software that emulates different listening environments. I don't know if this will translate well on the video. I've not done it in the video before, but let's open it up and show you what it looks like. And what this does, it, it models different listening environments. So how does your mix sound in other places? Uh, you get different kinds of rooms. Um, you get, these are all the rooms that come with it by default. I chose the uh, less expensive option, the essentials kit. So you got Steven's mix room inside a car, club mix, all this other fun stuff, different rooms. And so you can listen to how your sound, your mix sounds in other environments. So let me just go with this midfield monitors. That's these two right here in the middle. Here's the 8, 8 okay, the kick okay, the snare is not too loud. Maybe it is a little loud. But we want to know for sure, click on the mono box. I'm going through the Grok speaker right now in the middle. I hear the 8, 8 okay. That works for me. Well, I want to see what it sounds like in a car. Let's check this out. Let's see if this translates. Hopefully you're listening to headphones, you can hear the difference. Let's go to a different room here. Let's see what the modeling for the uh, AirPods sounds like. I don't have AirPods, so I don't know if this is accurate or not. Maybe you can tell me. Sounds good to me though. Let me go back to my room that I prefer, my ears prefer. And this two second delay here is built in. You can disable that if you want to. Um, it just gives your ears a break. Back home. Yeah. So now, I'm gonna, I'm happy with the mix. I'm gonna disable VSX, which means it's gonna get louder. So prepare yourself, three, two, one, and go. Uh, I forgot, did I get my ending done? I, I got my boom. Hang on the five chord there. I need a, I need a, a, some resolution here. So let's get my 808 on the downbeat. And now with Ozone running, there's a slight delay. Let's turn it off for a second. And then uh, we'll do a, a clap on the downbeat also. And then we got the open hi-hat there. Uh, where's my open hi-hat? Come here, saucy. And then we need some melodic stuff here. That bell, I think, will be, be good. So let's see anything sound like that. No. I don't want the bell. Go away, sauce. There we go. Let's go with a pluck, perhaps. Kind of 
had a lot of delay there. Maybe we can keep it there, but I'll just do a fade out. What happens here? Okay, so there has that sustain that ringing. See, that's noise that has to be eliminated. So we're gonna go up to my automation screen again. We're gonna fade that sucker out because we want clean endings. The music supervisors, music editors want clean eddings. Endings. Missed a the spot there. What we got now? That's good. Hmm, maybe a little quicker fade. Now I'm paying a lot of attention to this thing because it's the kind of thing that will kill the track from being used. And the whole goal of the reason I'm doing this is to get tracks to be used. And if the ending's not clean, the editor's being like, oh man, I, I could edit that, but I don't have time because I got a deadline. So bad track, go to another track. I've got thousands of tracks to choose from. Maybe I'll cut out earlier. That might be the way to do it. That sounds a whole lot better. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear. So I cut out a little earlier, let the fade start before the end of the piece did, and now I have a nice clean button ending, stinger ending, done. Not a long ring or fade out. Get rid of my automation here. And now we have, I believe, the whole track. Put Ozone back on, save it. Wow, we've been going at it for a while. I'm gonna guess, what, an hour and a half or so? No idea. Um, we play the track from beginning to end, and thank you so much for sticking around. And uh, be sure to check out the vendors I mentioned. Check out Cymatics. Check out I'm a Music Mogul. Uh, check out Native Instruments for the very cool uh, Ignition Keys uh, Play Series software library. So that being said, thanks so much, and we're going to play the track from beginning to end. We'll see you next time.
right, folks. Peace.